purity and holiness to people and actually impart that to people. And I just felt the spirit was so strong, like just like when I said that, there's like an authority behind it, the spirit that it was like it was amazing. <laughs> and then so so then I saw the I looked at the girl and I said, and I also see you working with kids and being a mentor to young kids. And she was actually in a position where she was trying to decide whether she was going to go to the Marines or stay and actually be a basketball coach and mentor young kids. Oh, wow. So it was like. God, God's just unloading, and they asked me, you know, like, how am I doing this stuff, you know? And I said, well, look, and I explained the cross, I explained Jesus, I, I said, you know, he paid the price for your junk so you could have unbroken fellowship with God. And he literally lives inside me, and I told, her, I told her, like, Jesus isn't this distant God, he's tangible, he lives in me, and that's, he's telling, he's bragging about you guys. Do you, and I just told him, do you want this unbroken fellowship? And they're like, yeah. We, we want it. We want Jesus. So they accepted the Lord in their heart. I prayed, for them. I prayed for them to be baptized in the Spirit, and they felt fire fill their chest. It, it's funny because, like, I'm like, like I know, like, the old school thinking with baptism of the Spirit is, um, you know, they have to pray in tongues and they have to bust out in tongues, and that's the only evidence. But yeah. Holy Spirit's just kind of like contradicting that stuff. Yeah. Is we'll pray all the time for people to be baptized with the Spirit, and like almost yeah. like ninety percent of the time they'll feel this intense fire fill their chest, <laughs> and, just, and then and then immediately they're able to pray for the sick and see them recover. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of like. Tongues doesn't break out, oh, yeah. but it's like, okay, God, what's up? And I realized the baptism of the Spirit. You see, when we try to seek after God, and we're yeah. like trying, we try in our own strength, yeah. and it's kind of, we're like trying to do what the book says, and we don't have the power to. Yeah. We try to follow God with all our heart, and it's just something we fall short, because our heart pulls back. You see, the, the true mark of the baptism of the Spirit is passionate, raw Woo! love for Jesus. Yeah. It's completely on fire, being ready to die for this gospel. It's power to live righteously. Amen. Miracles follow after that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Amen. But really, it's, it's God, Holy Spirit coming and empowering you to follow after Him wholeheartedly. And as you're following Him after Him wholeheartedly, things just follow you. Yeah. Right. Like God just moves around you and people see the power on your life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's good. Yeah. So, so with that word about purity, like in holiness, I spoke to her. I went home and then like um, was... Late last night, I opened my Bible to one passage and it says the same thing that I opened to Isaiah 55 and the same exact thing. God's like, try to say something. So I'm like, okay, I'll listen. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it says, for as the rain comes, all right, this is Isaiah 55, 10. For as the rain comes down and snow from heaven and does not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So here's a picture of seeds being planted, right? And grain like bread and water coming down, watering those seeds and then them bringing increase, right? Now here's what he compares that to. He says, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing which I sent it. Amen. When, when I said Amen. holiness and purity, there is a grace yeah. released. And I told him, I, said, I told him, yeah. big changes are going to start happening. Yeah. But whatever God calls you to change or let go of, mm -hmm. he's going to give you the grace yeah. to do it. Yeah. 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 That's a grace. People confuse grace with mercy all the time, you know. Yeah. They think that uh, grace is just, oh, God forgives me because I'm a wretched yeah. sinner. That's not grace. If you look up the definition, it means the divine influence on the heart. What it means is God sets up camp inside me and it changes me. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's true grace. Mercy is God forgives me of my sins. God covers. God has pity and compassion on me. Where he says, look, you were messed up. You were screwed up. Yeah. But I love you. And I'm not going to leave you there. I'm going to empower you. You know? Because, um... Before I knew the Lord, I was uh, I was a wreck. I was messed up. I was uh, into witchcraft, homeless on the street, drug addict, into meth, and if I I did not like Christianity because I saw it so horribly misrepresented and just right. saw it abused. So That's I was right. just I was and it was weird because I had a weird relationship with God where I knew God existed. I was just you know trying to be against Him. <laughs> it's kind of hard to be against someone who's always for you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I tried, it didn't work too well. Here I am. 
I mean, what happens if we, what happens if we model that? Yeah. I mean, think about this. Jesus, yeah, on the worst, heinous crime in human history. I, I'm, I'm sorry. If people do bad stuff, but killing God, I think, takes a lot. Right? Yeah. So, what'd you do today? Oh, I stole. What'd you do? Oh, I killed God. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty horrible, right? But in the middle of humanity's worst, most heinous, crazy, sinfulness, Jesus, on the cross, dying, says, yeah. Father, forgive them. They don't even know what they do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Here's another concept, which I'm, I'm going to try not to get on a rabbit trail with this, but were they forgiven of that sin? Jesus asked forgiveness, yes. But were they saved? No. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that means being saved is not just forgiveness of sin. You could be forgiven of a debt. You could be forgiven of something, but not really be saved. So, God's just been kind of re, just redefining the gospel for me. Mm, that's good. Amen. Like, because it's been preached a lot. Like, this is kind of, uh, if you ask people, I ask people on the street a lot, and I talk to people just about their perception of what they believe the gospel is. And here's what I hear. I hear that... God is angry. God, God's basically mad at you until you accept this Jesus. And then uh, then he's cool with you because he doesn't see you anymore. He's, he only sees Jesus. And it's kind of like this weird mentality like that, you know. Yeah. And the, the problem is when they come and basically it's just a get out hell free card. I said the prayer and I'm going to go to heaven when I die. Mm -hmm. And they don't really grasp this relationship aspect now. Yeah. And it's really sad because it's just, oh no, I have a burden on my heart for people like that because I run into so many believers that aren't believers. That's right. So many people who, who they have the name Christian and it's like, but they're not passionate about God. They don't, it's like they, they seriously think God's mad at them and it's just they don't want to approach Him. They don't want to talk to Him. They don't want a relationship with Him, but they don't want to go to hell. Yeah. You see, but we've preached it kind of like a go to heaven, go to hell thing. And we preach it like God actually delights in sending people to hell. And God doesn't even like hell. Read the end of Revelation. Yeah. He throws hell in the lake of fire. Yeah. 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 I mean, seriously. Yeah. So if God doesn't even like hell, God hates hell so much he's going to throw it in the lake of fire. I don't think he's delighting in sending people there, you know? He said, I wish none should perish, but all should come to repentance. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Come on, yeah. yeah. It's the gospel. So, so what is this being saved? Like, what, what, what makes us saved in the Christian life, in the gospel? What aspect of it? I'm convinced it's not saying a prayer because I've seen too many people who've said a prayer and they have no relation to God and they end up worse off than before they did because the devil's like, oh, you're saying a prayer? And they don't get that relationship established, so he comes in and just wrecks them. I've, I've seen people, I remember when I first started walking on this yeah. stuff, I... I, I led a girl to the Lord, you know, and, like, God showed up, and then I, I, she said the prayer, you know, and then a year later, I run into her, and she's in worse state than she was, and just even more against God, because she's, like, never established a relationship, and then I'm realizing, Amen. wow, there, there's something to this relationship with the Father. Right. Right. I, I want you to turn to uh, John chapter 14. Verse 6, it says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to heaven except through me. Is that what that says? <laughs> no. Well, what, it says the Father. So that passage is commonly quoted to represent heaven, which that is true. You don't have eternal life except through Jesus, period, regardless. Jesus is the only way. That's right. He's the only truth, the only life. But he's not pointing to that. He's pointing to a relationship with the Father. Right. He's saying, look. I'm the way to the Father. We have so many different religions, so many different gods, and then people get frustrated with all the religions, so they're like, you know, I'm just done with this chasing God thing, and they yeah. become atheists, you know? Yeah. But there's this whole chasing God thing and not finding Him. You have you have Muslims, they're, they're constantly in fear of their salvation because they're doing it by works and doing it by a law, and they have no guarantee that they're being saved, you know, and they have no real relationship with the Father. Yeah. They, they really believe you can't interact with God. That's right. And it's sad because Hinduism, they have all these gods and they're trying to reach out and they're trying to like get God to be on their side. 
You know, and they have no real relationship with him. Jesus pointed right there, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So what, what he did was he paid the price for all our junk so we could have complete fellowship with him. So we could yeah. enter in the veil, so we could know God, right? Yeah. And Jesus is the exact representation of God. So what you see in Jesus is completely true about That's the Father. Right. That is a picture of who the Father is. <laughs> Jesus was loving, he was kind, he was merciful. Yeah. He was passionate. He was completely opposite of the mindset like people right. give him. Yeah. I mean, the woman caught in adultery, she was thrown before him, you know, and he's like writing stuff in the sand, you know, and then he's like, alright, you guys want to throw stones at her? Who, who hasn't sinned? Throw the first stone. Mm -hmm. And they all had to back away because they're like, it said they all got convicted and he looks and he goes, I'll judge you. Just go. Sin no more. Don't do it again. That's repentance, you see. Repentance means change the way you think. It's simple. It means you're thinking one way, you're going one way, and you actually turn That's and go right. another way. That's right. Yeah. Sorrow, like there's a godly sorrow that helps your repentance, but that godly sorrow isn't repentance. Right. You see, the godly sorrow actually helps you change because you're like, dude, I'm like going the wrong way. I need Jesus, you know? But the repentance part is actually changing the way you think. It's That's not right. saying I'm sorry and feeling bad and beating yourself up. It's actually believing the truth. And that only works when the kingdom of God is established. And that only works in relationship. Because you turn from one thing to another. Amen. Problem is we turn, we beat ourselves up over the one thing. And we don't realize the relationship aspect. So it's like there's nothing to turn to. Right. That's right. good. Yeah. Very good. That's right, yeah. But yeah. It's good. Okay, well, I'm, stuff I'm saying, this is not what I, like, planned on, so, <laughs> wow. it's good, it's good, it's good, so, so, uh, John chapter, turn to John chapter 17, uh, I've been talking about this being saved in eternal life and what this is, you know, verse 3, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. Wow. So, Jesus, the pinnacle of our salvation, the pinnacle of being saved, the pinnacle of everlasting life is knowing the Father here and now. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's saved. It's a relationship with God, where God comes, sets up camp inside you, and you have unbroken fellowship with Him. Yes. Amen. You see, the problem is, like, Jesus likens this concept to seeds, you know? You plant a seed, and, you know, it, it grows, or sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it gets taken away. That's because relationship doesn't get established in people's lives. And here's something I'm learning, too. You've got to be really gentle with the salvation message. Like, when we went out, I, I don't even know how many people gave their lives to the Lord. It was just back to back to back to back, just people getting rocked. But there's uh, one girl... We, I walked up to her and I asked her if I could pray for her and she made a point to tell me she's not religious. <laughs> I'm like, awesome, neither am I. I'm not religious at all, you know? I'm like, but I want to tell you you're amazing. And she's like, well, thank you. And thank you for your wishes. And she was kind of like, and Buddha's amazing. And she was just kind of like, you know? So I just looked at her and I'm like, well, I feel like... Uh, you have a lot of people leaning on you and depending on you, and you look strong to everyone around you, but it's kind of like you have a pressure on you not to break. And I told her, you're the type of person who, if you're in an airplane going down, you'll worry about everyone else around you before you'll take care of yourself. And I told her that God wants you to know that sometimes you need help, and sometimes you need that. And she's like, just kind of eyes got like really <laughs> open, and she's like, that's like dead on. She's like, that's exactly what I'm going through right now. And then it got deeper and deeper. And then God started showing me her family. Like, she comes from a Christian family. And, like, it was just it was just amazing. And then I prayed, and she got her pressure headaches left, you know. And um, But it was amazing because she said, wow, I guess I met Jesus today, huh? She said, the real Jesus. She saw me. And she's like, can I get your number just in case like, I need prayer or need anything? And I say, yeah, sure. So she wrote my name, Josh and Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing. I told, her, I told her, I said, look, God's real. He's here. He's tangible. I said, I, I explained the gospel to her. I explained, you know, just Jesus to her. And she, I asked her if she wants to. And she said, I'm not ready yet. So I said, look. 
he's a gem God, Jesus, he's a gentleman and he loves you and he's going to pursue you regardless. I say, he's going to pursue you until you fall in love with him, period. There's no way out. Yeah. Right. I just said, but just remember, whenever you're ready, he's there. Just when you're by yourself, I don't care if you're in a crowd by yourself, just ask him. Just be like, come into my life. Yeah. See, I see more fruit when people establish a real relationship. There is one kid. And uh, he was a raver kid, you know, and this was at a <laughs> holiday party, and he had a stomach ache, and his girlfriend was Christian, you know, she's like, they need Jesus. So I walk up, and like, do you got any pain in your body? He said, yeah, man, my stomach's killing me, and well, check this out, in Jesus' name, stomach will be so, it's like, dude, it's gone, that's crazy, you know, I'm like, yeah, man, Jesus loves you, and then we just left it away, left it alone. And then later on that night, I, I hear this girl say, ow, really loud, and I'm like, hey, that's like a... Audible word of knowledge to me. I'm going after it. So, so this girl is sitting down, you know, and she's got her ankle and it's all swollen and bruised from skating, and she's just like, just in pain, you know. I'm all check this out. You want to see something crazy? Show what? I'm all, I'm gonna pray for it. It's gonna get better. She kind of looks at me really weird. She goes, okay. So I pray, and then she's like, that's so weird. I'm like, no, that's Jesus, and like all the swelling, everything left. Well, that raver kid's sitting right there. Watching this, that was her, his friend. So he comes up to me, and goes, "Hey, could I uh, pray for myself if I'm sick?" <laughs> I'm like, "Well, my wife has." I, 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 I told him, "I'm like, look, dude, Jesus is real. You know that now." I said, "When you get home by yourself, say, Jesus, come into my life. I want, I want to know who you are." Amen. Was it like a month later? Like we, we're. Uh, witnessing in the same park, come across this guy who has a messed up shoulder and we're trying to get him to pray, you know? And we're like, and then all of a sudden, he comes up wearing a Jesus shirt. <laughs> He's like, dude, you need to let them pray for you. <laughs> Seriously. See, I didn't have to get him in like a stronghold or like beat him up and like, say my prayer, you know? It says, it says, we sow, we water, he brings the increase. And somebody comes to the Lord, if we're blessed to see somebody come to the Lord, which I love seeing people give their lives to the Lord. That's my passion. I love seeing that moment where they're changed, when they're awakened, when they're born again, they're a new creation. Yeah. I, that's, that's like my joy in life, is just seeing someone come into the reality of knowing God. You see, but the thing is, I know if you push the seed too hard, it cracks. Right. I mean, wow. Take a hammer to some seeds, then try planting them and see what happens. <laughs> it's not going to work, right? Yeah. And here's another thing. You can plant seeds and not see them grow. And they might not even sprout up for a while, you know, because if you, if you plant a seed in the ground, you're, you look at the ground, you're like, I don't see the seed. I don't see the fruit of it. I don't see nothing. Yeah. But you don't really know what's in that soil you're witnessing to. You can find the hardest people have like the millions of seeds planted throughout their whole life. And then you just water, water, water. As soon as one sprouts, yeah. they're the most ra crazy, radical people for the kingdom. Right. Yeah. Come on. So, so it's like, it's amazing though. But the thing is, everywhere we go, we're trying to establish relationship. We're, we're, and it's really easy because like the whole love God, love people. I know that's really, really simplified. And that's what it really is. It really comes down to living in a relationship with God. Everywhere you're at, you're in awareness with God. You're in a relationship with God. If I'm in the mall, I'm looking to the Lord. I'm in a relationship with Him. I'm enjoying Him. I enjoy His presence. I'm like, God, I just thank you for your presence here. And then someone's in front of me. I got to love them because I got love in me. Jesus is love. He lives in me. So then everywhere you go, you could just be a conduit for the Holy Spirit to flow through. And it doesn't come from looking for people. It comes from looking at Him and loving the person in front of you. Lord God, I just thank you, God. Your gospel is amazing, Lord. Thank you, Lord. No, like, like seriously, uh, we were at, what was it, Target? We were just on a date, just mobbing around. We went to get something to eat, and I saw the the Portlanders, you know? <laughs> you know, the wearing all black, like tattooed up, and you just look at them and like thick eyeliner on the girl, and you're just kind of like, they look like they might not like Jesus. <laughs> I don't know why. Huh? But we walked up, and I, the dude has a, his leg in a brace. So I'm like, dude, what happened? He's like, oh, I tore it. I'm like, dude, let me see your hand. 
I'm like, check this out. I'm going to pray for him. He's going to get better. He's like, okay. <laughs> pray for him. He gets healed. He's like, wow. It actually, I felt something. It actually feels better. And he takes his brace off. And he's just like, wow, thank you. I'm just like, you did you. Wow, I like so judge you guys wrong. <laughs> you can never, you you seriously cannot judge. I've seen like people with spikes and the most meanest looking people be the most tender teddy bear people. Mm -hmm. Like once you start talking yeah. about Jesus, you're like, okay, we really can't. And I've seen people that look the most clean cut being the most bitter towards yeah. God. So it's like you really can't judge a book by its cover. It's like you can't see the heart. Right, brother. But oh. Oh, so we were in um, Target. That's where I was going with this. And, and I was just closing my eyes, and I started feeling God's presence. So I'm just like, oh, I just thank you, Lord. Because, you know, His presence is always there, but there's yeah. a tangibility to it. That once it becomes tangible, it's applicable. Mm -hmm. But so I just feel it on my hands. I'm like, thank you, God. You're amazing. You're here. And I just start feeling, like, really light. And just God's presence getting drunk in the middle. Like, you know, it's, just, it's, just, it's Jesus. He's there. And this girl walks by. And her hand's, like, all wrapped up in this really heavy brace, you know. And I'm like, what happened? She's like, oh, I broke my wrist. I'm like, check this out. Watch. It's going to be so cool. And I just prayed for her. And she's like, wow. It, I felt heat. And I'm like, yeah, check it out. Is it better? She's like, Actually, I don't feel any pain in it. And she's like, thank you, wow. And then she leaves, and then we, we had to stop by the dollar store. So we're there, and I see this guy, and he's like stretching his arm like this. And I'm like, ah, thank you, Lord, for the visible words and all. So <laughs> you don't have the intensity of trying to guess something's wrong. You, know, you see a pain, and you're like, hey. I don't know why. I'm hearing in my heart that you have an issue. <laughs> so I'm like, dude, what happened to your arm? He said, oh, I was throwing baseball and I messed it up. So I pray for him. Just like, check this out. Like, give me your hand. They asked him if I could pray. I just said, give me your hand. He's like, okay. So I'm like, Lord, I just thank you in Jesus' name. Shoulder be healed. And he's like stretching. like, dude, it's, it feels better. Like, um, he was just real low key about it, didn't freak out, didn't, you know, scream, praise Jesus. It's just, <laughs> it, it feels better, you know? And I'm like, is it completely gone? He said, I think so. And then, so I just left that alone, and just walked. And I'm like, Jesus thinks you're amazing. And then I walked uh, to the back of the store and I noticed the uh, cashier holding your shoulder. I'm like, <laughs> yes, Jesus, you're making it so easy today. <laughs> so I, I pray for her, all of a sudden she gets healed. And she's like, wow, you know? And then all of a sudden, the guy actually goes all the way to the back of the store to ask me what I believe and ask me about Jesus. And he was a Christian, just, but it was just amazing. It was like, wow. And the, all that was was simply just me living in a relationship with God. I didn't, like, go there and, like, okay, I'm going to minister. Yeah. Right yeah. Give my life to the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, you just love yeah. God. I was, I was on my job site, like, like, I'm working, doing a rehab on a house, you know, and I'm, like, isolated from people. And one of the guys who lives there, I prayed for his back, nothing happened. Sometimes it happens, you know. But, but, but here, the other nephew shows up to drop off keys. And I'm like, hey, man, can I, can I pray for you for anything? And he's just kind of like, he, you could tell he doesn't have a real good relationship with the Lord at all. But he's just like, yeah, I'm actually hauling a trailer that's pretty heavy. Pray over that. You know, just to make me feel, he gave me something to make me feel better. He's a nice guy. So, so I prayed over it, and then I said, "Dude, you got pain in your body?" He said, "Oh man, my back's messed up from years of abuse." He's like, "Like, I'm like, well, let me pray for it. You want better?" And he looks at me and goes, "Yeah, that that will take a miracle." Well, dude, give me your hand. <laughs> this guy looks at me and goes, "Okay, I'm on Jesus' name. Back be healed." He's all, it. It actually feels a little better. So I'm all, well, it's not gone yet. Give me your hand again. Prayed like three times, and then he's like, it's it's gone. It's it's like yeah. better. He said, that, that's crazy. And I like, I'm like, where are you at with Jesus, man? He's like, oh, well, I'm been kind of running. Um, or he didn't say running. He just said that him and God's not on good terms. So I just told him I shared with him the gospel. And here's here's the be here's something really beautiful about the gospel that I'm grasping more and more every day. It's the love of God. That's right. Yeah. That's right. See, the gospel isn't that I was such a wretched, horrible sinner that God had to come and kill his son because I was such a screw-up that he couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's crazy.
preach the best twist and that's messed up. That's from the devil. The gospel is that I was worth the blood of Jesus. I was the joy set before him. The God looked upon me and said, I don't want that one. And he's, I know he's going to mess up and miss it, but I... I created them with so much more value. I created them with so much more worth and it's worth right. everything. Amen. So I'm paying yeah, everything right. for them to get them back. Yeah. Yeah. See, the best of heaven, literally, heaven got bankrupt to get me back. Like Jesus. I'm sorry, there's nothing better in heaven. It's Jesus. that He created everything. That's right. He gave everything for us. That's how much you're worth. You see, the cell phone, my cell phone, you go to a store, you buy a cell phone, you actually pay money for it, and that's actually how much that cell phone's worth, right? You go to a store, whatever you buy, that's how much it's worth. So Jesus says you're worth it, and he paid everything for you. That's your worth, and that's your value. And it's amazing, because we no longer have the right to get our value for what we've done or through what we do. Amen. See, I don't get my value because God heals through me. Because, well, like, here's the thing, I can't heal anybody. Yeah. I have no ability to heal people. God does. Yeah. So I just get to love people and I'm I'm honored and blessed to see them flow through me. And I love that, you yeah. see. But it's amazing because it just keeps me humble. It's all it's all about him. It's all about but the thing is I don't get and I don't get my esteem from where I've messed up, where I've missed it, what I've done in the past, you know. It's funny because I used to like search for skeletons in my closet, you know? Like I got all these skeletons because I came through witchcraft and all this stuff and I'm like, I came through some hard stuff. And then it's funny because I start praying about it and just, I just felt in my heart, God's like, what are you talking about? It's good. Yeah. When God says, I don't remember your sins anymore, He like means it. He doesn't like take that back every time you feel bad about yourself, you know? <laughs> it's like, oh, well, remember that time you're way back in the day? When you, no, He covered it in the blood of Jesus. And it says in Hebrews that I can have a pure conscience before Him. Okay, so back to the gospel. <laughs> well, that's all. It's all the gospel. Yeah. But um, so I love seeing God's love transform, and you know, I love, like I said, I love seeing miracles. Uh, yesterday was an explosion of miracles, where just back to back, just people all day getting healed, giving the lives to the Lord, getting prophesied over, giving the lives to the Lord. It was just, it was amazing. And then, but uh, a couple weeks ago, my wife and I were at um. Uh, the Heaven to Earth Festival, is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Like, a bunch of churches got together in Pioneer Square, and they are just having prophetic booths and live worship, <laughs> and, uh, it was cool. And then I was walking by, and we are just, we saw, like, three kids get baptized in the Spirit, and then they immediately start praying over each other. Like, I got a word of this kid's leg being short, I'm all, sit down and check this out. He didn't even know it. I held it, and I, his leg was, like, a half inch short. I'm like, that's why you get back aches. And I'm like, dude, come here. You just got filled with the Spirit. You, come here. Pray for him. And he prays. <laughs> Even. It's just like, I'm like, dude, I didn't pray. You just prayed, man. That happened through you. Yeah. Yeah. So these three kids got rocked. Well, anyway, so I'm walking around. And I see this uh, girl. She's got cuts all over her arms, all over her chest, all over her legs. And when I say, like, she's a cutter, you know? Like, literally, it looked bad. Like, she had gashes that were, like, four or five inches thick with stitches all over it. And, like, she was just just demonized and just had a lot of issues going on. And I asked her if I could pray, and it turns out two of the guys next to her, uh, I think they're from Vineyard Church, they were ministering to her, too. And, like, she, they, they were, like, breaking down some stuff. And then we just all started... It was, like, weird because we all started flowing together. It was, like, it was just amazing because... Like, we have this concept, like, this is my church buddy, this is yeah. my, this is how we operate. Yeah, yeah. You operate like that, yeah. but, but this was so natural together, like, yeah. where I'm not from that church, but I, I just loved it because yeah. it was the same spirit. It's, it's almost like the same God in these churches, you know? It's like, wow, that's the Jesus I know! Wait, what denomination are you? ministering to this girl and she does not want prayer at first and she's like would flip and start pulling her hair out and just like just going back and forward and we like literally spent like three hours with her working her through forgiveness working her through some like job god revealed a lot of stuff she went well actually she revealed it 
So, like, she was just telling us stuff she went through, and, like, we were able to, like, work her through forgiveness, or trying to, you know, and then finally she let us pray over her, and she wanted prayer for her family, because she wanted, she wanted a family restored, and as we're praying, Christians started walking up, and believers started walking up and just ministering with us. So next thing you know, we ended up with, what, like, 15, 20 people around her. Wow. She just, it was like she wanted a family, and then God's saying, oh, I have a family for you right here. Yeah. 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 So, uh, I think his name is Justin. He was uh, sitting there, and he just said, hey, I really feel God wants to speak to you. So, let's just, ask, just I want you to ask God what he wants to say. And it took a while, finally she does. And she says, I saw the color blue. I'm like, well, what does that mean to you? She said, it means hope. Mm. I'm like, wow. And then uh, she, uh, I keep sensing, like, um, some, sometimes I'll see in the spirit, you know, and I keep sensing this demonic all around her and this huge warfare going on. So I'm, like, all, like, ADD and, like, talking to her. I'm, like, <laughs> you know? And then, no, I'm paying attention. I'm just looking at the air over here. <laughs> no, but, but anyway, so, so. I'm just, so I just start praying. I'm like, Lord, I just pray for your angelic to hold back this demonic crap. Yeah, this demonic right. stuff. Yeah, come on. You know, and I just prayed for like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I just prayed for like, uh, you know, God to hold it back. And she's like, oh, it's from my necklaces. And she takes off the string of necklaces and puts them in her backpack. And she's like, I'm not throwing those away. And she made clear she's bisexual. She's into this. She's into that. She's into all of this stuff, you know. And um, so right when she takes them off, Chelsea and Amira come by, and they see her, and she's like, wow, that's a nice necklace to Amira, and if she takes off the necklace and gives it to her. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, Chelsea's like, I feel like I need to give this to you. And then, um, wow. so she basically puts them on, and she, like, grabs her necklaces, runs to the trash, throws them away. So I'm going to have Chelsea come up for this part, because you're in the story too. So. <laughs> okay, well, while I'm, while I'm ministering to her, you know, trying to show her the love of God, um, all of a sudden, yeah, sweet. Okay, all of a sudden, Chelsea and Amira walk by, and this, I'll, I'll let you start it. So we see this tall guy standing kind of on the corner at Pioneer Square where those, like, big poles are. And we walked by, and he kind of whistled at us, and he was, like, making some kind of comment. And all of a sudden, we, me and Amira stopped, and we turned straight around. We marched over to him, and I looked him in the eyes, and I said, Do you know that Jesus loves you so much? You are so amazing. You are just, you're his son. You have a destiny and a calling. And I just want to break that off of you right now, because that's not who you are. And so we just looked him straight in the eyes, and we just started ministering love to him. And we just laid our hands on his shoulders, and we broke off all the demonic that was attacking him, and then we filled him with the Spirit, and we said, you know, do you know Jesus? And we kind of did it backwards, it's so funny. Like, we filled him with the Spirit, and he, like, felt this heat in his chest, and he was just like, you could tell in his eyes that he was just completely getting rocked by God. And then we were like, you know, do you know Jesus? And he said, yes. And, and I said, you know, this is a new day for you. The Lord's revealing who he is to you. And this is a brand new day. You're never going to be the same after today. And he just like, he was so, I can't even describe to you the change that I saw in him because he was standing there like with all these demons and he was like this demonic stronghold that was holding all these demonic forces. And then we just ministered love to him and we saw the gold in him. And we called it forth, and he got filled with the Spirit. And after that, he was following us around the entire rest of the day, like just soaking it in. He was smiling, and he was just like so excited about God. And just, it, it was like the joy of my day, just seeing how radically different he was. And, and he even, oh, we were praying over the girl with the cuts on her arm. And he goes, he looks at her, and he goes, he touches her nose. And he goes, in Jesus' name, no more pain right there. And she goes, oh, how did you know I have pain there? Because there's no mark or anything. Wow. So he was already doing the thing. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, with that girl, um, I just heard, buy her rose. You know, we walked by this place, and I bought her, like, um, 
she was this yellow orange rose and gave it to her and her daughter's name is Rose and I was like and I told her I said look this is from your heavenly father this is from God and he wants you to know that you're loved and you're cherished you're precious to him I give it to her and she breaks down crying because she lost her daughter and it was just kind of like that was God showing her you're going to get your daughter back and God's going to restore relationships and yeah, it, it was amazing and then um, well then what's amazing though is the next like we worked her she didn't forgive her mom there you know but we worked her and we just spent like hours with her you know because sometimes it's an explosion you see miracle after miracle and I love that but it's very it's just as much important as spending time with the one you know and it's like the person in front of you it's like God cares about her enough to spend all day with her you know and it's like it's easy to kind of like you go out you talk to one person and then you just kind of like the enemy says, oh, you only talk to one person, you know? But the reality is that changed that That's person's right. life. Yeah. Yeah. So I gave her my number and she gave me a call in the morning and she was at uh, the Vineyard Church and she said, hey, I just want to tell you that I forgave my mom. I'm giving, I'm, this morning I'm going to lay my life down and give it to Jesus. She said, I'm giving up other religions. I'm giving up, uh, I'm, she's like, I'm giving up being bisexual. I'm giving up all this stuff and I'm giving my life to Jesus. She said, I want to get baptized today. And, uh, and it was just amazing. She just sounded like a different person over the phone. Like, it was just... So this girl went from pulling her hair out to, and, like, tripping out to just wanting Jesus. And it was really because love. It's like, oh, that's amazing. We get to become the love of God to people around us. And it's that love that, like, overcomes fear, too. Like, like how many of you... I, I know this... Your pastor was bragging on you guys, saying that you guys were all like, all like walking on fire. A lot of you, nice. But, but I know like sometimes you're not, you know, like it's really hard to break past that fear factor. You know, because like you go in there and then it's like you feel God wants you to speak to someone. And it's funny because a lot of times God will put on your heart to speak to someone when it's really inconvenient. When you're in a hurry, or you're when you're this, or you're like running in, and Holy Spirit's like, go back, talk to the guy. I'm like, but I'm late, or I need yeah. to, oh, okay, <laughs> I'll do it. Or, or you'll get a word, and that fear will grip you, and you're just yeah. like, sit there, and then the longer that word yeah. sits, the more that intensity rises up, and it gets so intense that you're just like, I can't even do that anymore. I just also have some keys, like, to really, like, It's funny, because like, I was that. praying this morning, and the Lord said that He wanted to address fear, and, um, yeah. Yeah. When I first started going out with Josh five years ago, I was scared to death. Like, it was hard for me to even say, like, God bless you. <laughs> I was like, I was so not that type of person. And I was just kind of like, so I kind of stayed back a little bit at first. And, I, like, I just, I realize now that I was under so much fear. And I feel like, like, there's... There's been for so long just this fear yeah, over yeah, the area yeah, yeah. that people just need to break yeah, through it. And right. God's raising up a generation of fearless yeah. people. Yeah. 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 And it's just so it's so amazing to me because like now I can walk up to anybody and just tell them the love of God and there's no fear at all. And it just came from like just consistently going and stepping out of my comfort zone and just and taking a stand for God. And I remember like a defining moment for me. We were walking around doing a prayer walk and um, there was this big guy named Myron with us. He was like really, really tall, big black guy. He has a shofar. And he was walking around the square with me and he was blowing the shofar and we were doing this prayer walk. And, and I was kind of in the back and there was one guy behind me and I was like, Oh wow, we look like a cult. <laughs> like in my mind I was like I was like seriously like scared and like worried about what people were thinking walking by and then all of a sudden this guy behind me said he said, Lord, I thank you that we're either for you or against you. And that just wow. stuck in my heart and I was like, you know what? I wanna be for God. Like, everywhere I go, I want to look like his daughter. That's what I want to look like. And so that radically changed me, just, like, changing the way I think about myself. When I'm at the grocery store, I'm God's daughter. Like, I'm just hanging out with him, and anybody he wants to touch, I'm open to that. So I just feel like we, I'd like to just impart to you guys, like, do you want to pray? Yeah, let's pray. Yeah. So, Lord, you're amazing, God. You say perfect love casts off fear, and... 
the more we get to know you, the more boldness we have because we just know your love for us and it just overflows. We can't help it, God. So I just thank you for everybody here, God, yeah. that you'd fill them with the boldness, God. Yeah, that you just impart crazy, radical yeah. boldness, yes. God. Yes. Boldness to show love regardless where the person's at. Boldness to step up and love the person in front of them regardless yeah. what they look like, regardless who they are, where they are from. Mm -hmm. That you just give them that grace, God, that, that radical love. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, that they'll just be radical sowers and radical, just radical waters and sowers, God, everywhere they go, God. I just thank you, God, that, that the reaper sowed seed everywhere, regardless where it landed. <laughs> so, so I just I pray for the same heart, God, that everywhere they go, that you'll give them words, God. I just thank you for grace on this house to increase just the words and knowledge, God. I just increase, God, just the prophetic. Let the prophetic just flow with ease and natural, God. Just completely natural where uh, they won't even know they're prophesying. They're just talking. All of a sudden, God just shows up. And next thing you know, they're like saying exactly what the person needs to hear. And I just thank you, God, for just that radical grace and healing and all this, God. But, Lord... Everywhere they go, not just here, but when they leave, God, that you'll set up divine opportunities, God. Everywhere they go, someone needs you, God. So I just thank you, Lord. Thank you for them. In Jesus' name. Were the kids released? Yeah, we can release them. Okay, can you bring them up here? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a and I just felt like the Lord had a challenge for everybody. Like, um, I know when I first started going out and just praying over people, and I know a lot of you do, and that's so awesome, but if, you, if some of you are kind of feeling fear about it, I challenge you to grab one person and just go somewhere with that person, just um, and just go, like, go up to somebody and say, hey, can I pray for you? Like, the Lord just put you on my heart, and I pray for you for something. So I just challenge you guys, like, grab a friend and just go... Just go where the Lord leads you.